Hello, everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the stories that bind us. And so I think this one, um, out of all of them, is uh, the, the most straightforward um, and maybe easy to understand out of all the readings that we've gone over. Um, and so, you know, I think that that should, should be a good uh, sort of palate cleanser uh, when we're thinking about these other, oops, <laughs> other readings. Um, so let's take a look at this. Um, so in this uh, one, I think the, uh, the main concept I would look at are the ascending, descending, and oscillating family narratives. Um, I think that's gonna be really useful uh, for you to understand kind of the key uh, things about this uh, reading. Sorry, this just got down downloading. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what those are. Um, and so, just remember, like when we're thinking about a family narrative, this is not necessarily something that family is like consciously developed. I think it's just uh, things that kind of happen unconsciously and over time, and definitely kind of goes back to how the family talks about itself. So let's uh, focus on the three types of narratives there are. Um, so the ascending family narrative is the type of uh, narrative where it's we keep going up and up and up and up. And this one uh, can create a lot of pressure, not so much on the first generation or even the second generation, but I think the third generation is where it kind of all like really kind of starts to, to weigh down on folks. So for example, if we look at, uh, I, in my PowerPoint, I put the Kardashians. And I was like, well, why are we talking about them with ascending the family narratives? Well, it seems to me like from an outside perspective that they have one. Um, so for example, like their father, you know, came over here, didn't have much, rose to become a very successful lawyer, was part of probably uh, the most infamous uh, trials of the last, you know, 30, 40 years, the OJ Simpson trial. Um, and so that he was able to, to make it uh, to, you know, very far. Uh, his children though, seem to have even gone and surpassed that, right? And so this is where I think when we look at that third generation where things get really kind of like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of pressure uh, because there's this idea in the ascending family narrative that you're going to kind of surpass uh, the previous generation, right? So as in the article they mentioned like, you know, grandma came over here, here with nothing, then was able to uh, work hard and develop, you know, get, get a business and then, you know, send their kids to school and college and then their kids did even better. And then again, sort of by this third generation, it's like, oh, like there's this pressure that we have to keep ascending, right? And it's really hard sometimes to top. Um, and so this is very similar in a way to the descending where it's just kind of the opposite. In the descending family narrative, it's just this idea that everything just is, keeps going down, down, downhill. Like, you know, grandma and grandpa had this and then now, you know, they lost it. And, you know, my parents lost even more and did even worse. And now it's coming to me and it's just, uh, just get even more of a downward slide. Um, so that's the descending. The oscillating, and this is the one he believes is most healthy, is the one where it's like there are ups and downs, right? Like there are ups and downs in all of our lives. And I, I think that this, why, this is why the family narrative of oscillating is the most productive, is that it acknowledges that there are both ups and downs, that life is not just a series of highs or a series of lows, that it's both. And if we look at ascending and descending, those family narratives have this sort of idea that, oh, it's just, it's all downhill or it's only uphill. And if it's not that, then it's some great catastrophe. Whereas in the oscillating family narrative, it recognizes there are ups and downs. Um, so yeah, so I think that if you're looking at taking away something from this reading, that's the something. It's the different types of family narratives um, the other thing to kind of look at too, I would say is the importance of family uh, and knowing about your family and having a family narrative and the impact that that has on children. Um, so one last thing I just wanna say, when we're thinking about this reading, 
Um, I think it really connects to the other West Moore and both of their stories. And so the whole point of the other West Moore is using like a specific example to help bring out a lot of these concepts. So if we're looking at don't, the science of success, and this article, they're all talking about families and children in a very general sort of way, right? They're not like really having specifics uh, besides Craig and Caroline in Don't, there's not really specific people that are named. It's always talking about people and, and, and children in general. And so that's why I think something like The Other Westmore can help kind of help you give a specific example of like, oh, the, uh, the author Westmore has an os oscillating family narrative perhaps, or maybe The Other Westmore has a descending family narrative perhaps. And so that it would allow you to kind of give specific examples of these terms. Um, and so that's something that I would kind of think about doing uh, with that reading and relating it to this one. And like I said, I think that it has a really strong connection to the other Westmore. Um, all right, well, thank you for watching this. And uh, again, if you ever wanna talk about these uh, with me, I'm happy to do so. Um, otherwise, I will just hear what you have to say about it on the discussion board. Bye.